guys, what's up? Today I'm going to run you through a really simple workflow for shooting clean 360 product photography at home in your home studio just using base gear you may already be using other than the 360 module. Today's video is not really about the gear but just getting a crisp result and harnessing the motion which is just a little bit more work than a normal product photo. You'll see what I mean. So for our test subject we're going to be shooting this bottle. Bright, tons of intricate reflections, kind of tricky. I promise if you watch this workflow start to finish, you'll 100% be able to implement this in your own workflow, especially if you have a simpler item. And huge shout out to WebRotate360 for making today's video possible and being the sponsor. Thanks guys. Now let's get shooting. F16, ISO 100 to 1 200th of a second should be great settings to have a nice sharp result. We need to account for the motion field the product's going to spin through as it rotates. That's pretty deep depth of field, but F16 should be good. And we want clean results. So before we take any photos, let's turn our transmitter off and just take an ambient shot with the flash off. And hopefully that should be a dark black result. If you have any light in there, it means the sunlight's going to play a role in your shoot. So with all your flashes turned off, just make sure your ambient's completely black and you won't get any flicker. So for our exposure, we're going to use one speed light in the back there. It's a Yang Nuo. And it's turned on here. It's aimed right at the center and it's just floating to not reflect in the bottle or refract in the bottle and hopefully just give us some contrast separation from the background, but also give some volume to the actual liquid in the bottle, which is such a cool feature of this. So really nice and bright. You see the surface is also bright, so we're getting some good separation from the background. And you'll notice the speed light's kind of at a downward angle, so it could reflect in the surface there. So let me show you why I have this rigged up back here with a bar. I use this black card from the dollar store, and I often clamp it above my scenes. And that's just to help me retain contrast. So that'll block some of the light coming from the back. It'll give me a cleaner experience. It'll improve contrast. And let me just show you a quick before and after because it's pretty pronounced difference. Uh, just having that there versus not having that there. So you see up here it gets sharper. And where it reflects here, it totally defines the bottle and makes it acceptable. I'm still dealing with a little bit of haze at the sides, but this is miles ahead sharper by having this card here, and it's totally non-intrusive as long as we leave this little perimeter here of white uh, between the two subjects. That's perfect. So before I light this product from the front, it's looking a little bit off-center there, and I just want to make sure it's totally centered. I'm going to use symmetrical elements of the bottle just to make sure we are truly centered either left and right. I'm using these areas on the skull just to see the symmetrical elements weren't symmetrical. I think that looks really symmetrical, this last adjustment here. What do you guys think? Now, I just set up our app to do one eighth rotation so we can check the lighting. Sometimes you'll light things from the front and then it'll spin 360 and it'll all fall out the window. So you want to make sure things are looking good from different angles as you go. So I'm going to launch this right now to just to do an eighth rotation. So we'll do our same backlighting from an eighth. But just check out what it's looking like and if there's any area to improve or anything to be concerned about. And the backlight check is looking really good at all the angles. It looks even stronger in this side angle. And that's really good just to visualize and check. The intricacies of the skull are looking really cool. Sometimes I even do a visual 360 test. Just spin it 360 and look with my eyes how it looks. But it's really good to confirm a few fundamental angles like 90 degrees or 45 that they look proper with the backlight before you get too far. So I'm bringing a speed light here just in front of a diffusion panel just to give a little kiss of light onto the front of the glass and wake it up a little bit from this shot, which is cool, but there's so much potential for some cool light play in some of these areas. I think it'll give a better idea of the material finish. So that's a quarter power, nothing too crazy, pretty subtle, but it'll just add a little bit of light to the cap of the bottle, which right now is channeled between the diffuser we brought in and a reflector at the far side. We really just want to improve the cap because it looks so underwhelming here. It looked kind of dark and swampy, and we want to replace that high ISO swampiness with some really crisp data. So we have our speed light set up here. Quarter power on the speed light, full power on the backlight. Let's see if this new data is complementing our skull. I love how you get a glassy quality the second you get a few odd glossy reflections revealing the shape. Light play is super important in glossy products. When they reflect things directly, it reveals their material finish by the light passing through it, especially if the area has some shape. Like I'm looking forward to the sockets 
maybe getting some light play through the sockets. This kind of thing is great. So when in doubt, set up a reflector or a diffuser and see if the reflections are complementing your product or having a better idea of conveying its material finish, like here. So now that we've done the legwork, we just need to decide how many degrees each rotation is going to be. We don't need to actually capture 360 images. 24 is pretty smooth at 24 frames a second. That's a second of rotation, if you think of it that way. We're going to do 120 rotations, which is completely overkill. But I just want to judge this in the most resolute terms possible. So we're going to go with 120 rotations. Okay guys, so here we are inside the actual desktop publishing software that creates the interactive 360 views, the spot editor made by WebRotate360. We're going to make a new project. We just have to grab all our images. So I'm going to hit create new project, workflow 360 project. And here's my project folder, which is great. And here's my image folder. So this is where all my images are, the 360 degrees. They're all in here. So you can completely bypass Photoshop. You can tweak your images if you want, but you don't need to. This will chew through it and build everything you need. So I'll hit create. And it's asking me if I want to downsize the resolution, which is good for loading speeds. I'd probably go around 1,000 on my own e-commerce website, but let's do 100 just so the quality's not getting in the way. So while that chews through that, I'll just mention they also create a WordPress and Shopify plugins. I'm a Shopify guy, so that's really useful because they got rid of a lot of the hassles in hosting on a website in a quick way. I selected Make Compatible with Web Hosting on PixRiot here because they offer optimized web hosting for 360s. So it's kind of a one-stop shop, like all the modern programs are, and sort of a total solution for 360 product photography in one place. All right, so here's the view we get once we load our images, and we can scroll through and just inspect everything's nice and smooth. And also we can scroll with the actual scroll bar and check out the file names up here in the top left. As we move the image, they change, which is really useful, I find, in this view, because if your flash flickers or you have any problematic things with your image, you can fix an independent frame and get it back into the mix, which is way faster than redoing your whole 360. So now that we have that figured out, I'm going to turn off the crosshair, which is super useful for your one shot and your 180 shot to make sure they are aligned, which they should be theoretically. And we just need to scale our image up and choke it off a little bit into this bright area. So to do that, we could use a path. And if we drew a path, we'd want to pay attention to our 180 views just to make sure we're creating a big enough path. But I'm going to do it just by choking off the scale of the image here, holding Alt. And this gray background, for instance, we can nuke that to white. There's enough contrast separation. But for something like this, there's not. So let's crop this out, holding Alt. And just get something like that view, where now we are completely self-contained. We're in a bright area. And this program is really good at getting these bright areas to pure white. So I'll show you how I do that right now. We go over here in the Filters tab. And there's a ton of filters you could be adjusting. I would do most of my adjustments already with my raw images. But the thing I want to fix is the actual matte. So I'm going to turn this on, which helps me see what is pure white. And just drag this one node over until we're completely isolated. That helps me know we're on a pure white background. And I'll just look around the image and make sure this perimeter is maintained. It's OK if there's a little island of white, because what you see up here is I blew out the cap a little bit, not a huge deal, but I don't want to push it any further. So we'll just have a look at it. And the back angles are a little trickier. And a little more because that back angle. OK, so now we have a good 360. This tool helps us know that. And we're on a pure white background, which is really exciting. We don't have too much flare or you know bright edges to the product, even though we shot on a pretty bright setting. Another tab which is really useful, I showed you tools and filters, is Canvas. I won't be using it today, but you can add watermarks on your images if your clients request it, or for your demos on your portfolio. And Rows, another tab I'm not using, but so useful. You can add another dimension of turnability. So we're turning this left to right, but we could turn this up and down if we add another row of imagery. That gets really creative and some really interesting shooting scenarios. So subscribe if you maybe want to see that in the future. But I want you to know that functionality exists. Another really cool tool I didn't use today but is worth mentioning is Hotspots. Web Rotate 360 Spot Editor is kind of known for Hotspots. It's a really good feature because you can create a call out, like a button that's interactive around the view. So as the product's spinning, I could call out that this has a corked closure. Or I could call out that it's a 750 milliliters volume within here. We can hit this button up here if we want to play our 360 and just watch the motion go around smoothly. But I recommend just exporting it and watching it in full quality in your browser, which is just a click away. We'll click this button here to publish it, the 360 test. I'm going to see it in Google Chrome. 
and quality 9494. Again, this is super high quality, so when they zoom in, they're gonna go to like the full 4,000 pixels pretty much, but that's okay, because I just wanna check out and make sure it looks pretty good. So let's hit publish. So here we go. We can launch this right from our browser to preview. We can deliver it to a client immediately. It looks really sharp. I think this kind of view is really good for e-commerce, depending on the product type. If it's a little more bougie, it can be super useful and warranted, honestly. But it's also just a really clean, modern element that any client could value for their shop. I really enjoy them, and it's a bit of like a VR element, if you think about it. So do you guys have any questions? Leave them below. I'm curious to know your tips for shooting 360. I know you guys have tips, and you do things your own way, so let me know. Thanks again to Web Rotate 360 and to all of you for tuning into Workflow. Have a great day, and I'll catch you next time, guys. Take it easy.